welcome back. At least 14,800 Palestinians, mostly women and children, in Gaza have been killed per the Ministry of Health in Hamas-run Gaza. I feel this is a very conservative estimate since so many are missing, unaccounted, and there's no organization that has the ability to take a correct census. The image you see behind me was taken by Mahmoud Hams with, the, with Getty Images. The image is enough to showcase the catastrophic situation in Gaza. Now, I would like to reiterate once again that if you have issues with what I'm saying, I don't care or give a flying fuck. My name is Ben Musa. Yes, you got that right. I am the son of Moses. And if anyone needs to be freed of tyranny and slavery, it is the Palestinian people. I am done placating, mincing my words, or softening my views. The government of Israel is unequivocally wrong in its treatment of the Palestinian people. They are undeniably an apartheid racist government who doesn't even want to listen to its own tempered and empathetic citizens. The government, again, I repeat, the government of Israel is complicit in many war crimes against humanity in regard to torture, false imprisonment, murder of innocent civilians, not just Muslims, plenty of other ones too, plenty of other different faiths, Christians and Jewish and Druish, all of them, including children and women and the elderly. The only solution is Netanyahu and his thugs and goons need to step down and a new election is held with no more drones, bombs, or IDF raining down on Gaza, the West Bank, or South Lebanon. This is not up for negotiation any longer. And I call for all the people who are protesting, sharing posts, creating posts all over the world that we join in this endeavor. Now, with that being said, let's talk about the proof of what has happened. Here is Surgeon Professor Khazan Abusita, I apologize if I mispronounce his name, who spoke yesterday to many news outlets. He told a news conference about the horror he'd witnessed and the crimes he believes Israel needs to answer for. My estimate is that there are now between 700 and 900 children with amputations of limbs, um, in some of whom multiple uh, limbs have been amputated. On one night uh, at Al-Ali Hospital, I performed amputations on six children. We had several patients who um, had uh, fly larvae in their wounds. Um, uh, I had kids with, with, uh, with worms coming out of the external fixators. The injuries sustained are incomprehensible. Professor Gassan said they included wounds from white phosphorus, which is banned under international humanitarian law and which Israel denies using. With black burns, and the, if you cut the, and you, what, your job as a surgeon is to cut the burn tissue, and it literally cores into and then only stops at the point where it no longer has access to oxygen. And so you have to take out whatever is left of the resin because the resin allows the phosphorus, once exposed, to, to, to reignite. Professor Gassan has worked in other wars in Yemen, Iraq, Syria, South Lebanon and Gaza. This conflict, he said, is different. Having seen this massacre unfold, the creation of an uninhabitable Gaza Strip was the aim and the destruction of all the components of modern life with which, at which the health system lies was the main military objective. So all this devastation because supposedly El Shifa tunnel system was a Hamas HQ. So you would think by now they found all the evidence. Let's take a look at with Amy Goodman and her interview with The Intercept's Jeremy Chacal, uh, Sokhel, excuse me, as they react to Amanpour's interview on PBS with former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak. Well, when you say it was built by Israeli engineers, did you misspeak? 
No, no, some, you know, decades ago we were the, yeah. running the place. So we held them. It was decades, many decades ago, probably five, de four decades ago, that we helped them to build these uh, bunkers in order to enable uh, more, more, uh, more space for the operation of the hospital within the very limited uh, size of this compound. Originally, going back to the years of the British mandate, um, in the 1940s, it was a British military barracks, and then it was converted into uh, a hospital and uh, under both the Israeli and the Egyptian occupations of that area. And then in the 1980s, the Israelis began to do extensive construction on it. In fact, I was looking um, at the Israeli architecture archives that were set up, and you can go back and look at uh, from that era, and to Tel Aviv uh, architects oversaw the, the expansion of the Al-Shifa Hospital. And by 1983, they had finished the construction of underground facilities at the hospital. Now, we should also say the son of one of the Israeli architects who designed the underground facility said that when Israel was building these in the 1980s, they hired people from Hamas as security to guard the construction project. This whole tunnel system is of public record. Yet the aimless bombing of every hospital in Gaza, every school, was, was necessary for some reason. There was no way to access these tunnels using maybe, I, I would say, small elite ops like Mossad or Makal. I mean, what was the point of all this? So at one point, the doctor indicated that this was the aim of the Israeli apartheid government, to make Gaza uninhabit un uninhabitable. Let's consider those remarks and go one step further. So many have died, and we know that Gaza is one of the most densely populated areas in the world. Israel has about 9.7 million, and the past Palestinian population for Gaza and the West Bank is around 5.8. But all estimates and experts see that reversing by 2035. The fear of the Israeli apartheid government is the same fear that the South African government felt when dealing with their own apartheid situation. With 77% being black South Africans in the 1996 census, there was little choice for the white South Africans. For me, this has always, always been a concern. Netanyahu realizes a pure Jewish state would not be possible with so many Palestinians. Hence why he has not annexed the West Bank because that would create issues during elections. His extremist party and right-wing allies would have to concede to a possibility of a Palestinian prime minister being elected. Although, let's be honest, Israel is not in any way a true democracy since it has numerous restrictions for its Arab or Muslim citizens to even be elected. Google it. If you'd like me to do a video about that, please let me know. Also, let's us not forget Netanyahu is a hardcore Zionist born in Poland, who thinks the land of Palestine is somehow his birthright, and that, that, and that the Palestinians have no right to their own governments. Check this out. Do the Palestinians have a right to a separate state? Well, Mr. John has been talking about human rights. Well, I think that it's, no, I don't think they do. do the I mean, this maniac lies even about history. Check this out. Hitler didn't want to uh, exterminate the Jews at the time. He wanted to expel the Jews. And Khaj Amin al Husseini went to Hitler and said, if you expel them, they'll all come here. So what should I do with them? He asked. He said, burn them. So everyone, Chew on these facts a bit, share, like, or repost if you can, and keep the movement going. Be safe, take care, and thanks for watching this post.